Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Retro Pop Planet. If you go to a lot of thrift stores or flea markets like me, you probably come across these old media display boxes from the 1970s and 1980s. You know the ones, uh, the ones you've seen in your parents' or your grandparents' basement, collecting dust that has a bunch of uh, like Barry Manilow cassette tapes in them. Well, I found one and I have a bunch of loose cassette tapes that uh, I wanted to do something with. I wanted to be able to display them and get them out of some of these old shoe boxes that I have that are falling apart. And I'm gonna take about five minutes of your time and I'm gonna show you how to add some super cool, super 70s, super graphics on this media display box, taking it out of the thrift store and hopefully putting it on display in your home. I think you're gonna like this and it's got a surprise at the end of the video. So come on, let's get started. Ha, <laughs> I was listening to my Reservoir Dogs soundtrack on vinyl, but don't wanna risk a copyright strike. So I knew I wanted to paint this in orange. I really dig orange muscle cars and searched every paint store for a cadmium orange that had the perfect hue, but I couldn't find one to my liking. I found this paint in quartz at my local art store, and unfortunately the opacity stunk and ended up having to do upwards of 10 coats per side using a hair dryer between coats. If you try this at home, I recommend a quart of Advance from Benjamin Moore, their specialty cabinet paint, or any other specialty cabinet paint from another chain. Now that it's had time to dry and cure, I can get on to the super graphics. Wait, you know what those are, right? It's an art and interior design style that began cropping up in the late 60s and carried well into the 1980s. It's the use of bright and bold alternating stripe patterns that geometrically flow across spaces, be it a room, furniture, vehicles, clothing, you name it. Because this piece is an odd rectangular shape, I'm electing to go for stripes. Yellow frog tape is a good option for marking off your stripes because it's designed for delicate surfaces. If you're anal about exact measurements, you may want to skip this part because I'm not marking off anything. I'm just using the tape to connect points in a random pattern. When it comes to painting though, I'm the one that's pretty anal. Even with the frog tape, paint bleed is kind of an inevitability. One way to counteract that is to go across your tape lines with a base color before painting your stripes. I wasn't quite sure which color scheme to go with, but this aqua color from Liquitex complemented the orange well, so I decided to use alternating primary colors for the stripes. This is a heavy body paint, but I'm still making sure I get proper coverage on all four sides. Once the paint has dried, I peel the tape and move on to the next stripe this time a yellow. I used the same method, this time taping over my previous color. I was stressed that the paint would peel with the tape, but I got lucky. I guess I had forgotten to purchase yellow at my art store, so I ran to the local Walmart and found this Essentials branded paint. It worked out pretty well for me. I was a tad nervous about my decision not to prime the piece before laying down the orange. Ultimately, it all worked out in my favor as I moved on to the red. You've probably noticed that the stripes are alternating thicknesses on each side and this was on purpose. Don't forget to paint your inserts as these are noticeable when you open the doors. I opted to paint them black because the coverage of the orange was so poor. Plus it was already starting to remind me of a muscle car's dash or front hood and grill. I'm now signing my work. Always sign your work. And before I seal in these colors, I made a couple touch-ups to the stripes off camera. There's a couple of really good options when it comes to sealing your piece. I thought about spraying this with Krylon Triple Thick, but that would have taken ages for each side to dry and handle. And it was a fairly brisk and windy day, so I opted for an acrylic Liquitex Gloss Sealer instead. I honestly couldn't tell you how many coats I did, but it wasn't really that many. This is the part where patience is gonna be your biggest virtue. I screwed the little rubber feet back on and just let this thing sit. It'll take a week or more to fully cure. I did forget to record the final step. I taped off and chromed out the drawer handles with automotive spray chrome and cleaned the plastic drawers with Armor All wipes. It's a good cure-all for cleaning up plastic and vinyl parts. Be sure to stick around after my outro for the final reveal and for a surprise use for this unit. Okay guys, welcome back. What did you think of the video? Uh, I really love super graphics. I, I want to put super graphics on everything. I knew I was going to go with orange, but I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with the super graphics. So I kept them simple with just some basic primary colors. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, leave me a comment, and let me know if you tried this. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.